Alright guys, so we're starting the second episode of the quest line. And uh, we're pushing forward with everything. So, it's looking good so far. Um, this is also another uh, episode recorded post. And, um, as you can tell, some, some people are really slow to join groups. Like, they'll be sitting in your group for, like, five, ten minutes. And then once the rest of the group fills, they're still, like, the last one to, to come. And then somebody will just be running by and be like, hey, you got room for me? And then obviously, uh, because, again, my chronic illness, I'm not able to really do much. And I'm on time crunches a lot. I had to kick that person and uh, just take, I think it was Little Star uh, Penumbra as the last person and just bring them in. Since I am time gated for a lot of stuff, it, it sadly means sometimes I have to be uh, untoony and rude to people by kicking them. But also at the same time, if you're in a group and a group fills and you're not with it, like in there within the first couple of minutes, or at least letting people know like why you're running late, it makes it really hard for me to feel bad about kicking you because you had time. You you were sitting there for 10 minutes plus, etc. So it makes it meh. But I get it. You know, it's not it's not an everybody thing, but uh it is a me thing. But I'm excited to, uh, to get through these. We have more buildings and boss bot challenges. I think I need some stinky cheese, which is why we're doing a cheese invasion. And, uh, I made sure that I went to Donald's Dreamland this time as, uh, my first introduction to Donald's Dreamland. Because they have five-story buildings. Five-story buildings, and especially in the higher-level areas, typically have more cogs that come through. Unless you're doing Lawbot and you go down Walrus. Jesus, man. Or is it Polar? Walrus or Polar, wherever the uh, Lawbot HQ is. If you go in there and try to fight some of the stuff, I swear, they're rigged against you. They, they'll they start you off with like a level 12 uh, Legal Eagle, like right at the beginning. And then you have to like worm your way through and everything misses. I don't know. I, I hate fighting down uh, Polar slash Walrus. Whichever one it is that has Lava on HQ. But yeah. Nah, it's it's rough. I I couldn't I couldn't do it after I did one building in there. It was just so awful. So I'd rather go to Donald's Dreamland where it feels a little more fair. It feels like things actually hit a little bit more. They focus a little bit better. And stuff dies. That's kind of my whole thing. Um, I believe by this point, Monsterella Marmalade has quit. So, we're down a friend, so we kind of uh, are back to doing stuff solo. It is what it is. But, it could be worse. If I recall correctly, I said that um, bean counter invasion came up and I need bean counters. I believe it was a very specific quest that it forces you to find and kill very specific cogs. Like I said throughout a lot of my playthroughs, the best way to do anything when it comes to Toontown is to entirely avoid um, the... What's well, a good word for it? To entirely avoid the the grind 
of specific cogs or hoping for an invasion or whatnot, you should always just get general cogs. General cogs will always just be more ideal and allow you to just do more things. I noticed that I have trap now and it's at zero out of 20. So I want to say that now I'm actually in Donald's Dreamland doing Donald's Dreamland stuff. So I want to say that I knocked out the last of my five story buildings with um, little old man. So there's a good chance right now that a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is either for gag bag update, jelly bean update, or maybe some laugh. I know that from here until 80 laugh is uh, basically Donald's Dreamland. And then after you hit 80 laugh, it starts you on your cash bot suit grind. So before we even get to our cash bot soon grind, we're going to be here doing this stuff and making sure that we have uh, all our necessary stuff to start doing VP. It's going to be a little bit rough doing VP at the start because, like I said, 80 laugh. If there's four level 12s and they focus me, I'm dead. And that will be the uh, end of the run. That'll be the end of the Iron Man. Or at least it'll be the end of Cinderash, and then I'll have to start another character all over again. That would be just the absolute worst. I really like Dave's outfit. It's a uh, very piratey themed, but also kind of like a vampire pirate thing. I also really fell in love with the square glasses. I think they're just like one of the best like glasses accessories. Um, especially this early on. The later I got into stuff and I started looking up like catalog items and I started looking up cartoonable items and other stuff like that. I found a really nice pair of glasses that I hope to get when cartoonable comes out this, uh, this year. Sometime in what people have told me is September. Um, but I'm really hyped for that, and I can't wait. I'm also glad that a lot of the people that I came with were, uh, able to allow me to train my, uh, my sound up a little bit. Uh, especially because of how early it is into the, uh, elephant horn. It makes it so that, uh, I couldn't really do my BP stuff yet because like I said a lot of people are very very nitpicky when it comes to gags and they wouldn't take me uh, with the amount of elephant horns that I get and stuff like that so I have to make sure that when I go through and do factories because I didn't do any FOs where FOs would have gave me like a thousand plus merits every FO run um, I was doing long factories, short factories, I calculated them out, I wrote down a graph and everything. Um, so I was doing like seven factory runs of longs, and you know, during the, the later stages. I was doing, you know, shorts mixed with longs. I was doing some medium runs for when I needed them. And then uh, a lot of people didn't like that I was doing medium runs, so I didn't really get that many people. And a lot of people didn't even know what medium runs were, which I was very surprised about because um, I remember in old Toontown, medium runs were like the perfect amount for a lot of people during the first couple of levels where it's like you didn't need a full long, but you didn't need a short. Like you needed more than a short, but less than a long. So what you would do is you would go in from the side factory you would do the two skele two sets of skelecogs. You would do the initial set of cogs that you have to fight when you go in. You would go left towards the lava room, and then you would do the cogs up there. You'd unlock the door, and then you would follow through the rest of the content by doing the, uh, the four cogs in the smasher room. Then you would go up the, the silos. You'd do left silo, right silo, and then you would do the foreman. And uh, it would net you about 580 to 600 um, during an invasion in TTO. But as I recall, in TTR, you're always considered in a permanent invasion 
So they give you a boost of how many merits you earn in all the different contents. So I was really happy with this. Um, I kept a lot of the same people through my groups that I was doing these uh, buildings with. It was really, really nice. So I already knew the people I was working with were reliable, they were really solid, they knew what they were doing, and I really appreciated that. Now, I think I joined a Yesmin invasion because I needed more boss spots, or I needed Yesmin specifically. Um, I was pretty sure I was done with my five-story buildings at this point because I had to do those specifically in the Berg. And like I said, I already had my trap, as I saw on one of the end screens. So I'm pretty sure I was just doing Donald's Dreamland tasks, and a lot of them uh, early on are pretty rude. They could be better, they could be worse. But it is what it is. I later learned that doing buildings was, like, the best way to level up your stuff. But I honestly just couldn't. I was having such issues with, uh, the level and the grind and everything that... Um, it made it really hard for me to not just, like, do building after building after building to, like, train my gags quicker or train them better. Uh, because, like I said, a lot of a lot of my stipulations were just really random and just trying to make the game as hard as I could for me, just so that way I would have a uh, have a good time. So I made it so that I couldn't train any of my gags unless it was through tune tasks. Like invasions were only done through tune tasks, um, where I had to go fight specific cogs. Same with buildings; I could only do buildings if I had like a building task. You know, stuff like that. So, it made it really, really hard to get a lot of my a lot of my gags up. Oof, you gotta hate when sound misses. 95% accuracy and a 5% chance to miss. And yet, sometimes I swear that the sound will miss like three or four times in a row. That's so rough. I think in this district, it was a uh, speed chat only. Which, I for one, understand why they exist. Um, there's a lot of people who have children that they make their children play this game, or they have kids who also enjoy playing with their parent. And some of the way that people act makes it really hard for children to enjoy the game when everybody is like 30 or 40. And a lot of people act very rude or very raunchy and whatnot. But at the same time, I would really just like a district where they lessen the filter and make it for adults only. I know that they can't do that because Disney will come and shut down TTR. But at the same time, there are definitely words that I wish I could use that are just completely gated and censored. Um, and it's because they either have some bad word in there, or they have something that a 10-year-old, because that's what they base the filter off of, they base it off of a 10-year-old's, uh, language understanding. So, some of the words that are, like, more intelligent to use, or something above, like, a, what is that, 10-year-old, was that, like, a 5th grade? reading comprehension, they completely just turn those words off or make them so you can't talk them. Which I found really rough because it, it it's hard to work around a filter that's that heavy when your vocabulary is at least like a 8th grade reading level. Because you have to dumb it down, you have to like turn it around, you have to find simple words and explain those simple words to make them make more sense. Like, another one that I like to use a lot was, like, IQ or intellect. Stuff like that. 
Um, and they were blocked, which makes sense, I guess, because I don't know many 10 year olds that would know what IQ means or be able to spell intellect or anything like that. But also at the same time, when I was in my fifth grade spelling bee, you know, we had to be able to spell words like windshield and um, mononucleosis and other stuff like that. Like you, you had to do some really fucking hard words um, or words that just kind of had weird spelling. But it's okay. Alright, so... We're starting to get into the spot where I need to start getting cash bot suit parts. And there we go. I finally got another laugh boost. Because, as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff that I need to do. But I want to make sure that I had only the laugh boost. Because I wanted to save all the cash bot suit parts for later. Because... Uh, I wanted to do stuff in order of release, and basically from my understanding, without looking anything up, the order of release was obviously just the way you gather things. So it was, you did all your cell bot, well you did all the, all the different playgrounds to completion. Then you would do cell bot um, suit, and then you would do cash bot, you could get the suit parts, then you would do all of cash bot. Then you would do law bot suit parts, then you'd do all of law bot, and then you would do boss bot and do all of boss bot parts. And it was a little confusing for me because I had a bunch of people telling me that I was doing stuff out of order, even though I already got to the point where I was doing stuff like out of order. Like I know for a fact that like golf and go-kart was out before boss bot because boss bot got placed inside of the golf course. But to me, it felt unfair to do golf and go-kart, something that gives you six laugh for not a lot of time spent on them. Um, and I'll talk about that another time when I um, bring it up. But uh, for me, racing to, to max, people haven't nailed it down yet. And golf, they haven't nailed it down yet. But, um, through talking with people, there are a lot of different, like, I don't want to see cheaty ways, but there are a lot of, like, really easy ways to knock them out within, like, eight hours to, like, three days max. So, it made sense to me that I would save those for last, because six extra laugh at any point in Toontown is beyond amazing. Because six extra laugh at, you know, 66 laugh would put me to 72, which would mean that at 72 laugh, nothing realistically in the Berg will kill me, like, immediately, even four cogs that are, like, the highest possible level for, you know, Berg street-wise. Just not building, it's just Berg street-wise would not kill me. Whereas at 66, I have a better chance of dying pretty significant chance of dying actually if four cogs on the street just walked up and tried to murder me the thing with gardening is the only reason i started that like the day one that i got it was because of gardening gardening is the only thing in toontown that is time gated besides catalogs that you have to start like immediately if you want to get your four laugh from it by doing all the different eight flowers and while the four laugh from it are not significant enough i don't want to say not significant enough that's a good word for it is not projected and given to you all at once it is it is like i said done over time it makes more sense that regardless whenever it was introduced that you would just do it the moment you start your tune because you have to do it every day. You have to do 10 flowers per day. You have to water all of them. You have to do your trees, all that stuff. And it makes it really hard to just wanna stick with it. And that's, you know, understandable. Really, at the end of the day, that is really understandable. 
and I would never, ever want somebody to do my Iron Man challenge if they ever decided to, you know, take it upon themselves and, you know, make sure that they do all that. Um, and then do gardening. Because that just adds an unnecessary amount of inability to get organics. It adds the inability to actually, like, grind properly. And it makes it so that you already did... Let's say gardening came out after cash bot. That means if you were to play, like, 12 hours a day doing nothing but Toontown and knocking out all your tasks back to back to back, and then have to do all of VP and then do all of cash bot before you could do gardening. That alone would take about two to three months before um, you could actually do gardening, which adds another four months on top of that, which means you're doing this Iron Man for six months. That's rough. But as you can see, my uh, my favorite little dude, Scary Terry's back. Um, he's gonna get you, bitch. I'm surprised that they allowed uh, Scary Terry as a tune name, knowing uh, everything about him from Rick and Morty. Just absolutely blows my mind. But yeah, I um. I wouldn't want anybody to have to do an extra four months on top of all the other content that they did to just go back into uh, a longer grind where they could be like, you know, 137 laugh or 138 laugh before they get their other two laugh from gardening to be, you know, fully maxed out. And especially because at that point, you're not really risking anything. Because that would mean that you're, you know, while you're doing your gardening and you're getting the rest of the gardening stuff done, it means you've already done your law bot, your cash bot, your VPs, you've done your CEOs, you've done your FOs, and you've also done your um, golfing and go-kart. Which means all you have to do is just log in every day, do your flowers, and then log out, and there's no risk of you dying. There's no reason for you to even do anything at that point with your... Iron Man. So it basically just kind of negated the whole reason of the Iron Man. Which is why, again, some things are a little out of order, but realistically, what I was trying to do was just go in as traditional of an order as possible from what you would see from TTO days. This, uh, this grind's been a rough one, though. For sure. Starting off in Donald's Dreamland, you had a lot of general cogs, like you had to kill so many boss bots and stuff. Um, you had to kill very specific cogs, like uh, money bags, as you saw earlier in the video. And man, they were they were rough to get. I remember a lot of times what I was doing was that I was playing Toontown for small snippets. And then I was having to wait for an invasion because I needed COG specifics. And, like, it cut down the episodes from, like, being my normal two hours to being, like, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how long the invasion was or until I got my item. And then I was able to progress. Because some of the stuff was also COG specific, get this one very specific item. And then immediately had to go right into... Oh, yeah, by the way, you have to do this. Where, like, you had to do money bag, and then you go to the other thing where you had to do, uh, like, penny pinchers, for example. And it just made it really hard to just kind of stick with it. Because at that point, you're just so focused on, like, getting your one cog to drop that one specific item. That when you go and turn it in, you get really discouraged about the fact that you don't get the other item immediately and it's bad enough that with like a lot of the the buildings and stuff later on 
um, or like with tasks in particular. You have to go talk to somebody, then you have to run across the map to talk to somebody else, then you have to run back across the map to talk to that person, then you have to run across the map to talk to a different person, then they give you a task, you go and do that task, and then it's more running around and talking to people. Like, it's boring in the aspect of it's a lot of talking, but at the same time, it's boring in the aspect of I can't do anything fun or entertaining for you guys. And that also kind of just turned me off from the gameplay loop later on. Um, and I know it, it happens probably pretty close to VP where um, I started to get legitimate depression from doing factories because all it was was just constant gray sound and that was it. It was factory, sound, gray, finish, VP, finish, repeat. And the problem is a lot of tunes and a lot of people uh, don't talk and they make the game really, really boring and it makes me feel like I'm the only one playing and it just happens to be that I picked up like robots to come help me with content so that way I'm not doing it alone and it just it really really took a toll on my mental health when I was doing VPs it took me an entire month to finish up all of VP before I started cash bot suit um, just because of how many factories I had to do I also had to wait for people to do stuff. Like, nobody was doing factories when I was doing factories. And I found that to be a very consistent thing. Like, anytime I was focusing on something, the entirety of the community was doing something else. So, like, when I was doing VPs, nobody was doing VPs. Everybody was doing uh, CEOs and CFOs. And is really discouraging. But, I mean, the same thing kind of happened, but not really with CFO, when I eventually get to CFO too. Um, CFO took the shortest amount of time for me to, to max. It took me a week. Just a straight week of doing CFOs, and I was max. It was crazy how quick it went compared to, like, uh, VP. But again, I also attribute a lot of the factors of me not having a lot of laugh and a lot of uh, bonus slash good stuff going on with me was, you know, people would see my laugh, they'd kick me. People would see my suit, they would kick me. So it would take, you know, sometimes 10, 15 minutes to find a group that would let me go with them. Um, there was also times that I was running with uh, tunes from this Facebook group called Ada um, that were just either really nice or really just fucking terrible people. Um, I later learned that some of those people were admins in the group. Um, I won't throw any names under the bus, but uh, there's this one person in particular, uh, and it's a guy, who uh, is very well known outside of Ada as somebody who goes into FOs to purposely green people at the boiler um but yeah i was uh i was very very not okay with uh that so i had to make sure that um when i got to fo's if i get to fo's rather i should say uh that i have their name written down in a book uh, same with anybody else that i saw trying to green people or purposely green people i would always write their name down um, just to make sure I never ran with them. And I can tell you, uh, that list is probably about ten names deep right now. It's, it's pretty bad about how many people just go around trying to ruin people's enjoyment on a child's video game. But speaking of child's video game, that's a, that's another thing that bothers me about, uh, the Toontown community. Is people complain that this game is a child's game, right? And that's understandable. It is a child's game. And complain that people are elitist in the child's game. And I don't find that to be very true. I find it to be quite the opposite. 
I find it to be the people that are elitists understand the game. Which is really sad because it is a child's game. If you have max gags and you've been playing for a long time and anything, you should be able to understand cog math. And cog math isn't really that difficult. There's even like spreadsheets and like graphs and everything to tell you like, hey, if this cog at this level is unlured, this is what you have to do to kill it. This is how much HP it has. And it's like, same thing, um... Oh, what's a good way to put it? And there, there's ones for lures, too. It just doesn't make sense to me that, like, after playing for as long as you have, that you wouldn't understand, like, if you lure a level 10, you can kill it with a cake. If your cake's organic, you can kill a level 11 lure. If... Your squirt is organic, you kill a level 10 lure. If your squirt is not organic, you kill a level 9 that's lure. You know, so on and so forth. Or like, if you have organic TNT, it automatically kills a 12, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows that one. But it's just stuff like that that just kind of bothers me a little bit about the community, is people just don't take account for their own actions and blame other people for their lack of learning or lack of understanding when there's so many resources out there, especially the wikis and everything that just teach everybody everything. But that's going to be about it for this episode. Um, sorry for that little rant at the end. As always, I appreciate you guys supporting the content. I can't wait to see you guys on the next episode as we progress through. And you guys should take care, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys on the next one.